I'd also like to point out that um, by controlling the amount of current through this coil in the armature, we control the strength of the magnetic field, which controls essentially torque and power. Even that translates to speed. If I have a real strong magnetic field, I get a real strong attraction trying to turn it, and I can overcome more external load. So I can control the speed of this motor by controlling the voltage that I apply to it, and I control the direction that the motor turns by controlling the direction in which I apply that voltage. Now let's go back to our motor for just a moment to cover a couple of key things about how the motor, DC motor, brush DC motor is made that cause some problems for our control circuit. Um, so let's assume we have our motor running in, in our bridge circuit with, with just switches closed like this. So the motor's running one direction or another. We're supplying current to the brushes. The brushes supply current to that commutator through mechanical contact. And the commutator energizes those windings that we saw in the motor earlier, which sits inside this magnet. Well, what are the properties of what we're seeing here? Well, obviously we have a lot of wire wound up. There's a certain amount of resistance. We have this magnetic, this coil wound around the iron core um, that's spinning inside a magnetic field caused by the um, caused by the permanent magnet. Well, what happens when you spin uh, a, a move a, um, a conductor inside a magnetic field? You generate a voltage. So in the motor itself we're supplying a voltage this way from the battery. Well, at the same time, as this motor is spinning, and whether or not we supply power from the battery, it's creating a voltage on its own due to the electromagnetic effects discovered by Michael Faraday. So it's creating what is called a back EMF, back electromotive force, or back voltage. It operates in the direction opposite to the applied voltage, okay? And this limits the speed and limits the current that the motor draws as it's running. And even when you turn the, you open up these switches on a bolt and turn this current off, you still get that back EMF applied or generated from the motor spinning. But there's another thing that happens too. This is a coil or an inductor, which you may recall is an inductor um, essentially resists a change in current. As you apply a current, you have to build a magnetic field up, and that magnetic field increasing opposes the rise in current. And when you turn the current off, the magnetic field is going to collapse, and as that magnetic field collapses, it tends to induce a current uh, sometimes called a flyback voltage or an inductive kick. And that current that, that you induce as this magnetic field uh, collapses when you open these switches volt, is a problem because it can be very high in magnitude. You're collapsing this field. You're trying to generate current. You're essentially applying a current to an open circuit, right? And um, Ohm's law, you know, I equals the voltage over the resistance. Okay. Well, if the res or we can rearrange this and say that the voltage equals the current times the resistance. Okay. Well, if the resistance is infinite, because we now have an open circuit, what's the voltage? Well, in practical terms, it's not going to be infinite, but you can get some very high voltage spikes out of the motor at the time which you turn the switch, open the switches. Now, if they're mechanical switches, what you frequently see is arcing across the contacts, which causes wear and problems with the switches. If we're dealing with solid state devices, these, depending on the motor and the solid state device, these inductive spikes um, can be potentially damaging. So what do you do about it? Well, one thing we can do is try to send the current, give the current a place to go. Okay? If I put a diode here, here, 
there. diodes around this motor. Now when I get that inductive spike, um, current can flow through these diodes, essentially out of the motor, you know, like this or like that, depending upon the direction of that inductive spike. And that will give that um, extra current a place to go and you don't get build up the big voltage surges that are potentially damaging or even if they're not damaging there's certainly a distraction for your control circuit because it's going to see the noise and it's going to interfere with the measurements and things like that and if you're doing the uh, pulse width modulation control like we talked about um, you get a lot of switching action so it's you want to generally put diodes around your motor like that to prevent these spikes when you turn the power off from leaking out and causing other problems. Another source of noise in the DC motor is, of course, this connection between the brushes and the commutator. It's a mechanical sliding collection. Brushes bounce. You have the gaps in the commutator where you go from one, um, one segment to another. You know, and as you're going from segments, you again collapsing one sort of field on one set of windings, building a field on another. There's a lot of stuff going on here that's not good from a control system and from a clean electrical signal perspective. So you want to kind of absorb some of that noise. You know, if you've ever run, a good example is if you've ever run an electric drill and you look inside the vent holes in the back, a lot of times you can see the sparks going on in there. That's all electrical noise. So we want to suppress that as much as possible. So one thing we can do is to put a capacitor across the motor like this, say 0.1 microfarads. Now when the motor is running steady state, obviously the capacitor is seeing DC and doesn't do much. But all these little spikes and noise things and stuff that happen tend to, will tend to get absorbed in that uh, capacitor and then the energy is re-released. What some other um, sources recommend, is in addition to that, you can add a couple more capacitors tied to the case of the motor like that. So you end up with a total of three capacitors over the terminals of that motor and it absorbs a lot of that electrical noise and makes the circuit generally better behaved. 